Now what I want to talk about is what do you do when you've worked diligently for a long time to create stable, reliable, predictable performance? What do you do when catastrophic events happen? What do you do when uncertainty is pushed into the system? And part of that is understanding at the very basis this notion of uncertainty. People really want to believe they're boldly in charge of the world, that they can predict and manage the future. The problem with that is that you can't. And to get into that, I want to introduce a term that you might be familiar with, and VUCA really stands for, it's an acronym, and it stands for volatility, and that is the understanding that the environment in which you're in is constantly in changing mode, and because it's constantly changing, you're constantly adapting to it. Uncertainty, right? That means exactly what it says. The outcome, what's going to happen next, is simply not known and quite difficult to predict. Complexity, so it's a dynamic, interrelated, and interconnected operation. And then last but not least is the notion of ambiguity. And ambiguity is really interesting from a leadership level. And you guys who lead teams, lead organizations, lead crews, actually perform that leadership role, ambiguity is tough because the tools you've traditionally used to lead, manage, predict, and strategize, those tools in an ambiguous situation kind of fall outside of your expertise. VUCA environments, the environment you're in right now is a VUCA environment, require an entirely different set of leadership tools. Almost, I dare say it, but almost an opposite set of leadership tools. I think there are some strategies leaders must have, and if they don't have these, they need to develop them really quickly. Our organizations for the last 20 years or so have really been aligned towards optimizing efficiency. So you saw things that made the system more efficient. Lean thinking is a great example. Not a bad thing, but what's changed in the midst of this crisis is now there's a great amount of uh, support, pressure even for you guys, to not optimize towards efficiency, but in fact to optimize towards resilience. That resilience is incredibly valuable. And in a way, this bouncing forward idea, how we get better from this, in a way, the realignment, optimization towards efficiency, moving to optimization towards resiliency, will help us greatly in managing things like industrial safety, process safety, safety by design. A lot of the things we do would directly benefit from the ability to say, this system is brittle, this system is fragile, we need to build capacity here. It's not if it fails, when it fails, this is what we can count on. That deliberate action to build resilience is really important to what we do. Number two, we must insist upon diversity of information. We have to be able to talk to the people who do the work. And we have to ask them this question. And it's a really, there's really a couple of questions I'd ask, and they're important. The first question is, is during the crisis, when essential workers were performing essential work and production was happening, what worked well? What did you get rid of? What did you throw away? How did you create success? in the midst of uncertainty. And gather that information up. You have to build a system where people will tell you the truth because they're gonna tell you that many of your very important rules were not followed. Because we didn't have time, we didn't have the people, we didn't have the administrative support to actually follow those rules. That's very valuable data, very valuable data. But then ask the second question, what did you miss? Where did you need help? Where did you need cover? Where did you need somebody to to sort of take some of the burden off you? And those two questions as direct after action learning questions are vital to understanding how that happened. 
Thirdly, replace the need to fix with the need to analyze. Understand that agility is a very important tool in capacity towards uncertainty. And so all of your fixes will be at best temporary. Build systems where you analyze and gather diverse information so that you can pick up on that diverse information and move into the future smarter. Because being smarter is everything. Fourthly, build relationships as a strategy. I can't tell you enough how important this one is. And I don't really have to tell you very much about it because when uncertainty happened, what you counted on to build trust, to clarify communication, and to actually do high-risk operations safely and effectively, which is exactly what you guys did in the midst of a pandemic, was counted on one another. And so the relationships you build are in incredibly valuable to capacity and success. My quick answer in the observations I've made is that the organizations were best at doing this. They were best at doing it because they were generous. And finally, purposely monitor the capacity to learn. Build systems that create formative metrics that encourage the organization to improve operational excellence by learning from themselves. It's quick. Absence of crisis, these five things make a difference. Resilience, diversity, analysis, relationships, and learning. Because for you guys, resilience is not the absence of uncertainty. Resilience is the presence of capacity.